Welcome, friends, to the 2023 Acura Integra A Spec Technology Review. This is the six speed manual transmission model. And I'm going to be covering a lot of topics in this video, so get ready for that. But first, let's talk about what the Integra is, let's talk about some of the exterior aspects of it, then we can get into the drive the interior, the features, and finally I'll end off with some of the more financial things regarding this car and we can also conclude. All right, the Acura Integra is the new entry level vehicle that's meant to replace the old Acura ILX. This car starts at around $32,000 for a base ILX with destination. And once you get it loaded up, like you see here, it's around $37,000 and some change with destination. And you might want to spend that $37,000 just so you can get this manual transmission. That's one of the things you have to keep in mind. This six-speed manual transmission is excellent. It is amazing. It's worth getting, but it's only available on the fully loaded A-Spec technology model like you see here. It's not available on any other model of the Integra, which I'll talk about in more detail during the drive, but let's continue here. The Integra is based upon the Civic platform, of course, the new Civic. And I haven't driven the Civic Si. I've only driven the regular, well, it was the fully loaded touring model of the Civic. That's the only one I've driven. There's a lot of mockers and scoffers out there regarding this vehicle, you know, talking about a variety of things like, oh, why is it called the Integra? Why isn't it just called the ILX or the RSX or something? Uh, you know, they get really caught up with the, uh, with, the, with the naming of this and also the fact that this is just a fancy Civic. That's what a lot of people uh, see this as, but there's actually a huge value proposition with this car. And I'm gonna save that more towards the end, towards the conclusion segment, uh, because that's gonna deserve its own little segment. There are actual changes here regarding the Integra, the overall body, the, uh, the chassis is actually stiffer than the Civics. Okay, I think the Integras are approximately 2% stiffer than a Civic sedan, 5% stiffer than a Civic hatchback, just so you know. So right there, that's a change. Aluminum being used for the hood and also the front bumper beams. So those are other changes regarding the Integra. And of course, this car is actually a hatchback, right? It looks like a traditional sedan, you know, a very stylish, coupe-ish type sedan. And other exterior aspects I wanna mention before we get into the drive. The base model Integra is available with 17 inch wheels and the A-Spec models come with 18 inch wheels, 18 inch black wheels. I'm not like a lot of other people. I'm not the manual freak that I used to be, especially nowadays. I'm presented with so many like sucky manual transmissions in a lot of these new cars, right? Uh, car companies will say here, we're offering a manual and then it totally sucks. It's got an ambiguous uh, clutch pedal. It's got a weird gear shifter that just feels rubbery and just not very satisfactory to use. This is not like that. This one has a nice, metallic feel to the gear shifter. I'm really satisfied with it. There's a nice weight to the gear shifter knob. You're never gonna miss a single gear with this. The clutch is super easy, not overweighted, right? It's a predictable clutch pedal. You're never gonna stall out in this. You can truly daily drive this. There's never any issues with it. It's been one of the most enjoyable aspects regarding this Integra, okay? to the point where if I was shopping for a new car with current circumstances, the Integra, as you see it here, A-Spec technology package with the manual would genuinely be a vehicle that I would consider purchasing. Not just purchase, but lease, uh, because a lot of the new Acura vehicles are super affordable to lease. And that's one of the greatest value propositions 
of these Acura products and why I would totally consider it over any of the uh, more pedestrian Hondas. But this manual, I believe this is the same manual you get with the Civic Si as well. So the Civic Si is only available as a manual transmission option. If you don't know how to drive a manual, you can get the Integra with the same Civic Si engine, right? This 1.5 liter turbo four cylinder producing 200 horsepower and 192 pounds feet of torque. You can get this engine, but it's gonna come with a CVT transmission. That's the automatic that they have to offer. I know a lot of people are put off by CVT transmissions, but honestly, the new Honda developed CVT performs extremely well, and I'm sure it's recalibrated for the Integras to feel a little bit better, a little bit sharper. It's supposed to mimic gear changes. It's supposed to reduce that rubber bandy effect, if you will. That's what the Integra CVT is supposed to achieve. But this manual, it is just so easy to drive, so easy to rev match downshift and to heel toe. You know, when I'm presented with a proper manual transmission like this, the love for the manual comes back for me. And there are actually other reasons to consider the manual transmission. With this, you get a lightweight flywheel and we also get a helical limited slip differential. So the manual versions of the Integra this A-Spec Tech model, this is gonna be the best model in terms of putting the power down. It might only be 200 horsepower, but I mean, that's that's really not bad, especially for a car that only weighs like 3,000 pounds. It's got a 60-40 weight distribution, right? 60% front, 40% of the rear. And it's turbo power, so it makes all that power in a pretty low RPM range. So it certainly does have a tendency to peel out a little bit, but there's not really any torque steer. The vehicle is putting down the power. It just needs a little bit more uh, stickier rubber. Uh, when you have the wheel cocked, you're making a left hand, right hand turn, flooring it, right? Uh, it would be nice to have a little bit more of an aggressive all season tire. Okay, it doesn't need summer tires necessarily. I hate how people just automatically jump to, you need to put summer tires on this little 200 horsepower vehicle. Now, what it needs is just the most aggressive version of, you know, a Continental, for instance. An Extreme Contact Plus or the Michelin Pilot 4 tire would have been perfect for this car. And I think car and driver, they tested this vehicle to do 0 to 60 in like 7 seconds. And that's pretty much the same for the CVT version as well. The suspension on this car is a McPherson strut suspension in the front and a multi-link rear suspension. And when you go with these A-Spec technology models, you get adaptive variable suspension. So you have these various modes that you can play with. Also with the A-Spec tech models, you also get your own individual mode as well that you can play with. But with these adaptive variable dampers, it's made literally no difference. A lot of people, a lot of the Honda fans were very upset that the Civic Si did not come with the adaptive suspension, but in sport mode, in comfort mode, it literally feels the same. It's the same ride quality. It handles the same. There's no real differences there. You know, people really get bent out of shape regarding these various modes and these uh, adaptive dampers. In the majority of cars that I have ever tested, adaptive dampers hardly do anything. There's only been like a few cars where I've noticed a genuine change. That was like some high-end AMG vehicles and the Chevrolet or the GM magnetic shock vehicles, okay, the, the magnetic dampers. Those are the few vehicles where adaptive suspension made a difference. Now that aside, how is the ride quality with these 18 inch wheels? It's not terrible. It, it rides decently. It's a little bit on the firm side. It's not that the vehicle is uncomfortable. It just kind of lets you know what type of roads that you're traveling over, if that makes sense. It just communicates with you. It's nothing that offends me or takes away from the overall daily drivability of this car. And if you want a softer ride, that regular base model Integra is available to you. It still comes with pretty decent features on it, but it's gonna come with 17 inch wheels. That should be the best riding version of the Integra. Other things that I forgot to mention 
regarding the manual transmission. The manuals get a more aggressive throttle mapping as well. That's the other difference I forgot to mention with the manual transmissions. So ride quality is not terrible. I can totally daily drive this. I'll be very happy to daily drive this. And brakes aren't bad either. They definitely do their job. I'm very satisfied with them. I always have plenty of confidence. This car does come with rev match downshifts. I've been looking everywhere for a way to turn off the rev match downshifts. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad that the vehicle comes with it. They make it a pain to go and turn that off and turn it back on again. So you have to actually dig into the infotainment to find that particular section to turn off the rev match downshifting. The system works well, but you know, it's just way more satisfying to do it yourself. And I would also rather them have a separate button like a physical button to turn off that uh, rev matching feature. We have auto stop start with this car, which is just insane to have in a manual transmission car. You feel like you stalled out uh, when you didn't. It's, it's really smooth, but I just hate having it in a manual transmission vehicle. Uh, instead of having that auto stop start button, I would rather them make that the uh, rev match downshift off button. Steering is on point. I don't have an issue with that. It's very satisfactory. I think it's the correct weight. And even when you put the vehicle into sport mode, there's not a huge difference in how the steering changes. Even with me absolutely destroying this Integra for the past week, I've just been driving it like an animal and the car still returns phenomenal fuel economy. I mean, this car is rated to get like 26 in the, in the city, 36 out on the highway, something along those lines. It's even better when you go with the CVT, it's like 30 in the city, but I've been able to get 26 MPG in the city, driving it the way that I have, <laughs> you know, taking it to red line, doing all these rev match downshifts. I mean, it is very impressive just how fuel efficient these vehicles are. I can only imagine just how good it is with the CVT transmission. The only con with this Integra driving it most people would consider it to be that engine because it's turbocharged. It just lacks the character of the older Acura products, right? Even the old ILX came with that K24 uh, naturally aspirated four cylinder. It made the same horsepower, but of course with the turbo, this just has a lot more grunt in the real world and just makes it a little bit quicker to drive because of that. This Integra, it's not completely dead to drive or anything. For these Integras, Acura has fitted a bespoke exhaust for it, right, to give it an extra growl, if you will. And it does, it does have that additional growl. It's not completely soulless or characterless. Uh, of course, it can compete with the naturally aspirated engine in terms of character, but it's still very good. I think Acura has done a great job tuning this vehicle and definitely making it satisfying to drive every day. And before I end off this driving segment, I will touch on this last topic, the refinement. How is the wind noise, the tire noise, things of that nature? There's actually a little bit more wind noise and tire noise than one might expect. They don't utilize double pane glass. I think that's part of the charm in driving this car. It lets in just the correct amount of wind noise and tire noise to once again communicate with you, the driver without it being completely annoying, if that makes sense. It's funny because something like a Mazda 3 is actually quieter than this luxury product, right? But once again, I'm really not that bothered by it. I genuinely find satisfaction in this, even though it's not like the quietest car in the world, it's definitely not bad. The other thing to note regarding the Integra with its refinement on the highway, when you have this manual and you have the vehicle in sixth gear on the highway, you're typically running around 3000 RPM. So that's just one thing I noticed now because it's a four cylinder, it's not super loud, but I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Regardless of the high RPM that it operates at during the highway drives at around 75 miles an hour, it still achieves phenomenal fuel economy, nearly hybrid levels of fuel economy as we already discussed. But yeah, this car, it's really not the quietest thing in the world. If Acura wanted to take this car to the next level, adding the double pane glass and a few other noise reduction materials, that would be a great help. But as I mentioned before, there is some charm, surprisingly, 
with the wind noise and the road noise coming through the cabin space because it makes the car feel like you're traveling faster than what you really are. If you love to drive, then great. But if you're looking for maximum refinement, then this might not be your most favorite choice in the class. Overall, I find this to be a, an extremely satisfying and captivating package, especially with all the practicality and the excellent features that this car has to offer. So let's go ahead and let's transition over into that interior segment now. This interior is very similar to the Civic. I mean, it is the Civic interior with some additional enhancements, of course. And being the fully loaded model, we get even more enhancements. So you got the base model, Integra, then you got the regular A-Spec, and then we have the A-Spec technology like we see here. The A-Spec technology really does come with a lot of phenomenal features that most people are gonna want and they're going to enjoy. The biggest one being this ELS Studio 3D surround sound system. It's 16 speakers, 530 watts, I believe. Sounds absolutely incredible. The A-Spec tech package is worth it just for the audio system. That's how good it is. The clarity, the bass, the overall just quality of the sound is just so magnificent with the ELS Studio 3D. The base model cars come with like an eight speaker sound system and I have tried the Bose audio in the fully loaded Touring Civic. This blows that Bose audio system out the water. I mean, the Bose is cool for like the regular car segment, but in the luxury car space, this is amazing. In fact, this audio system and this manual take this car to like the next level for me. That's what makes this car hit way above its weight class. And what is that weight class? Well, it's things like the Audi A3, the BMW 2 Series, the Mercedes A-Class slash CLA. These are the types of vehicles that this Integra A-Spec is supposed to compete against. Obviously, this undercuts all of those cars, but unlike some of those European competitors, this does not offer all-wheel drive. It's just front-wheel drive, which again is fine for everyday driving, I would assume. Uh, especially if you put snow tires on this, I'm sure you will be just fine. But I mean, $37,500, this is like fully loaded the way you see it here. Whereas you get some of those European cars fully loaded, you're 45, 50 grand even. And that's just way too much money to be spending in this segment. Some of the other things with the tech packages, you get the memory seats, you get a heads up display. You also get a larger infotainment screen here. We have the nine inch screen. Once again, this infotainment is straight out of the Civic. It's a very simplistic plain screen, but it gets the job done. I appreciate it. It's not distracting. Another thing Acura said was it's got a really fast processor in it. So there's not too much lag with it, but in reality, there's actually a lot of lag. In fact, when you first turn on the vehicle, I, I kid you not, this system takes forever to turn on. It is so obnoxious and that stupid data collecting screen <laughs> that that takes forever. Like when you try to click on it to turn off the data collection, it just freezes up on me. So annoying. I hate that. And when you try to, once you're in the infotainment and you try to click on certain menus, it takes a while for it to load. When you're in the Apple CarPlay and you try to select certain apps, it'll take a while for that to load as well. So that's some of the annoyances that I've noticed with this infotainment, but overall it's very easy to use. The base model vehicles will come with a seven inch screen. Standard, all of the Integras come with the digital gauge cluster, which I think many people will appreciate. It looks pretty good, very clear, shows you excellent information and it's easy to use. The tech models like you see here also come with wireless charging pad. You also get some more USB and USB-C ports as well, especially in the front and the rear. And also you get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with the tech package. I really like it when they make these features wireless. I don't like plugging in the phone, uh, which is what you have to do with every other model of the Integra. Anyway, we have here some A-Spec bespoke seats. It's got the, uh, the, the suede seats, if you will, with the leather on the outside, and they are extremely comfortable. They look amazing, very supportive. However, I will say, as much as I like these suede seats, it's like a magnet for hair and other various particles. It just kind of sticks to the seat. And even when you try to vacuum it off, it, you know, it's like, it's like sticking to it, so it's difficult to even vacuum these seats. So that's one of the cons I've noticed regarding these particular suede seats. Now, I'm gonna mention a different car here, obviously not in the same segment, but 
I'm gonna I'm gonna mention it. It's the Alexis LC 500. That car also comes with unique sports seats with the leather on the outside and like a suede material going down the middle, much like this. But with that vehicle, it was much easier to clean. It didn't have like hair sticking to it uh, quite like this easy to vacuum that's one of the cons i noticed and you only have the suede here in the front in the rear it's an all leather seat but regardless they look amazing i like suede textures and we also have a little sunroof here i'm not a fan of this piano black plastic in the middle the center console and on the steering wheel here it attracts again more particles and it gets all scratched up and nasty i actually just cleaned this center console i wiped it off and it's it's showing all these kind of streaks and lines and I, it's just not very attractive so i'm not a fan of that but a lot of car companies are doing this now so you have two decent sized cup holders in the middle here and another large one in the door pockets as well which i really like the overall door panel looks pretty good you have one touch automatic windows just for the front two windows here not for the rear you have automatic headlights here and automatic windshield wipers once again, the climate control, I like how it's all separated from the, the screen here, and it's all easy to use, satisfying to use with that tactile feedback. We also have heated seats in the front, which the Civic Si apparently does not come with. The center armrest space isn't massive. In fact, they kind of took away some of that space to give you some larger cup holders, but it's overall, it's not bad. It's still useful. And the glove box currently is full of a bunch of books, but regardless, if you took the books out, placed it elsewhere, you would have a decent sized glove box there. Steering wheel, it's all leather wrapped. There's no flat bottom here, which is unfortunate, but it's okay, it's still satisfying to grip onto. And another aspect about Acura that I really like, especially with this Integra, they made all the safety features pretty much standard. Even the useful ones like blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, all that stuff. It's standard now of course when you go with the manual version like you see here you're going to lose out on certain things like the traffic jam assist and the adaptive cruise with the low speed mode you're going to lose that feature as well that's obvious because it's a manual transmission car right you actually have to physically push in the clutch to bring the car to a halt things like that but regardless plenty of great safety features and all of the safety features work properly Acura Honda all of their cars tend to be IIHS top safety pick plus models and that's no exception here and the overall adjustability in here I mean I can put the seat down even further and further back if I wanted to and you can be like eight feet tall and fit in this car the overall visibility of this is amazing that's something that they worked on you know making sure the a pillars weren't too thick the mirrors do an excellent job now this is a hatchback of course which i'm going to get to and because of that the rear glass is a little bit sloped so that's going to affect your visibility just a tad regardless of that it's still not terrible you can still see out of it and with that let's go ahead and let's transition over into the rear seats now once again despite the overall petite nature of this car being the entry level vehicle based upon the civic it's a very decent amount of space back there i'm five foot eleven i can certainly fit in the back behind myself granted i do sit a little bit closer to the steering wheel but i like how the front seats are mounted up a little bit higher so that gives you a little bit extra legroom as well that's intelligently designed but if you are a taller individual over six feet tall you're definitely going to be you know brushing your head up against the roof there because once again being a hatchback it's going to limit your headroom in the rear so that's one of the cons and also you're probably gonna have to duck your head as well when you get in and out of the the rear seat because once again this is a more low slung vehicle low roof line so taller individuals when they get in the back and they need to watch themselves and overall that's a, that's another thing i forgot to mention it's a little bit lower when you get in and out of this vehicle it doesn't bother me personally it's not terrible it's not like a ferrari or anything the front passenger seat does not go up and down it's just kind of fixed in that position but you can only move it forward and back and play with the recline okay finally let's talk about the trunk because that's a huge highlight regarding this integra it gives it literally suv levels of space back there makes it just so practical and so useful that's what i'm saying i really appreciate this car as a package it's just so well thought out plus you can fold down the rear seats and you have even more space now to to play with looks amazing it doesn't look juvenile it's not like a regular hatchback right actually it looks like a sedan it's a luxury car there's no spare tire with this but i believe you can buy a spare tire it'll fit back there but currently you just have like that fix a flat thing uh, that's all accurate gives you but anyway let's go ahead and let's conclude this is where I'm going to talk about some other aspects 
of this car that most car journalists just don't seem to cover. They just don't have time for it, I guess. I'm gonna cover it here regardless. The enthusiast, <laughs> that's what I wanna talk about. So many quote unquote enthusiasts were super unhappy with this Integra when they first unveiled it. They were saying things like, oh, why isn't it a two door? Why doesn't it look like the old Integra? And all these like crazy things. And I don't blame those people because I was actually once like that as well granted a long time ago, like 10 plus years ago. The enthusiast just has such a childish, almost a cartoonish way of looking at life and these products. They have an impossible expectation for a lot of vehicles. And the sad thing is they have all these expectations, but they, they don't actually buy anything, unfortunately. They don't contribute, most of them anyway, don't contribute to this new car buying thing. And you know, there's actually cool, engaging fun to drive cars that don't break the bank that are currently available as new cars on sale right now yet nobody buys them so these enthusiasts they go on and on about what they want and regarding this integra there was like a huge backlash with why they use the integra nameplate when this is like just a dressed up civic that's what they said right even these enthusiasts they don't go back to look at the history of some of these vehicles that's all the old integra was too it was just a dressed up Civic. <laughs> you know what the problem is? I think when most people think Integra, they exclusively only think about the Type R. They think the Integra was only available as a Type R when there was a bunch of other Integras available. There was like a stupid base model that was literally just a higher price Civic. And then you had like the GSR or the GXR, whatever it was called. People only remember the Type R for whatever reason. You know, nobody really studies these things this Integra being a quote-unquote dressed up Civic is not a bad thing. That's what the original was. That's what this is. I don't really get hot and bothered by these little things, okay? These little frivolous things, I don't really care for it. I am an enthusiast, but I'm a pragmatic enthusiast. I don't share that strange, cartoonish, unrealistic ideology when it comes to cars. I know what profit and loss is, and these car companies need to make a profit, and they need to sell something that first of all sells and second makes a profit. Imagine if they did make like a two-door Integra. So what? The enthusiast is happy, but they're not going to buy it and nobody else is going to buy it because it's a useless car. I mean, there's plenty of cool two-door cars out there. You got the GR86, you got the BRZ, you got the, you got the Camaro. You can get a freaking V8 Camaro for like 38 grand. <laughs> so, and nobody buys that. You have all these unbelievably amazing affordable vehicles under $40,000 in many cases, yet they don't sell. So if Acura did the same thing, it just wouldn't sell. Instead, Acura was smart. They produced this vehicle that is intelligently designed. It's a great looking package. It's still a cool car. It looks amazing. It's got the hatch, so it's very practical. It's got useful rear seats. Now, this is something that's going to sell, and it has been selling decently despite the chip shortages and all the other nonsense and the dealer games. I think they sold 12 or 13,000 Integras in 2022, and it just went on sale in June or something. So half the year, it sold like over 12,000 units. That's pretty amazing. Now, that's because this is a useful vehicle, and also because a lot of these new Acuras lease out amazing a no money down lease assuming you can get the uh the loyalty credit of a thousand dollars you can drive this exact integra for 420 dollars if you did like a one pay lease i think it's 480 dollars if you paid by monthly if doing a one pay lease it's what is what it's going to take to get an amazing deal then in this climate i will actually do that i think it's like 15 grand that you have to put down for the entirety of three years and that'll drop the interest rate to like one percent on a lease that is so powerful and these are the conversations that i wish most enthusiasts would have you know instead of being 
hot and bothered by the name that this vehicle wears. They should instead be concerned about, well, how can I put these cool cars on my driveway and learn some of these concepts like leasing? Even if you do nothing with this information, at least you can have the information in your back pocket. And I assumed the quote unquote enthusiast would appreciate me for that, for me dropping some of these, uh, so, some of this game, right? Uh, some people like to say. No, instead, I actually get ridiculed in the comment section when I speak like this, when I speak about things like, you know, how, how to buy vehicles how to finance them, how to lease them, you know, pragmatic ways of making these cool cars affordable. People are like, well, why is he talking about that? Why isn't he talking about the car? <laughs> it's just insane. And, and that's part of the problem and why I don't really relate to the typical enthusiast anymore. I am a pragmatic enthusiast. Even if leasing doesn't work for you, at least now you know that this stuff is possible and it can be affordable. Heck, even though this car is like seven or eight thousand dollars more expensive than a Civic Si, this lease is out better. This is actually cheaper to lease than financing a Civic Si. Isn't that crazy? And you're driving around in a luxury car, you get the luxury dealer experience. You know, you're working with Acura, not Honda anymore. Much better service. Speaking of service, this car comes with a proper warranty. I think it's like six years, 70,000 mile powertrain warranty. And I think Acura gives you two years of free maintenance as well. Yeah, I know this video is super long, but I just wanted to get all of this off my chest. It's not for everyone, but for those who actually stick around and listen to these things, I'm happy for you. I hope that you gain some edification and you appreciate this knowledge that I dropped that's different from these other journalists that just breeze through these car reviews, right? Very quickly and they don't give you this extra knowledge on how to buy some of this stuff so if you're shopping for this you should at least aim for maybe three percent off msrp on a base model integra and like five percent off on these a spec models if you can't do that then find a broker that can do that for you and pay him a fee and get the car that way definitely do not pay over msrp for any car if your local dealership is doing that then just walk away shop outside of your state if you have to but that's it for my very long review hopefully you found value with it thanks again for watching i'll have my next video on the end screen here click on it and i will see you there